Hello oh guys, welcome to my new video and today I'm super excited to be talking about the best healer for patch 9.05 or at least the predictions based on the proposed 9.05 healer changes. Now keep in mind, there is a huge disclaimer attached to this video because we'll be looking at some of the highest keys in the world from around 19 and upwards. We'll be looking at mythic ratings, so the tier set or the tier list for the healers should not be followed blindly when looking for something like a KSM, Keystone Master Achievement, which requires plus 15 on all keys. I have recently done plus 15s on every single healer spec, and I can tell you, the tier list to achieve that achievement is very different from the tier list I'm going to show you. This is for organized groups. This is for groups that have played together for a long time. This is for groups that know or can optimize dungeons and their class to an extreme precision. So, if you want to see the KSM video that's going to be released in the next week, let me know, guys, if you want to see it. And if you enjoy this type of videos, please like and subscribe because it does take me a little while. So, let's go and get started with the tier list. What am I seeing? It's gone crazy. There is tier lists everywhere. This video is... Okay, guys. So, the thing that you see right now here, this is not my tier list. This is actually using real play information, raging or based on almost 3,000 or above 3,000 runs, from 15 to 26. So this is really large uh, data set for higher keys using Fortified, Bursting, Volcanic, and Prideful, which is probably one of your best push weeks. And uh, this is going to indicate a good real play information based on which healers are really important or really picked or really in the meta right now. So this, on the other hand, is my tier list. And I'm going to be placing healers based on the information and data I'm seeing overall, both for Raid and Mythic Plus. So first of all, in Mythic Plus, you can see here that Mistweaver is in D. And probably I could actually agree with this right now because of the fact that Mistweavers have such a bad community perception. They do have mana issues. I have played Mistweaver very recently and I feel that they're severely undervalued and they could be jumping to B, maybe even higher. But the community perception being in melee, the fact that they're most compared to a healer like a Holy Paladin, and Holy Paladin basically is just a better version of Mistweaver at this point. Mistweaver is going to get a really, 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 really bad rap. So, what changes are Mistweaver is getting in 9.05? They're getting mana reduction. And uh, this is what people wanted. This is literally what people asked for and begged for. Mistweaver mana consumption is kind of on the high side. Don't get me wrong. If you play a Discipline Priest and spam Mind Blast, or if you play something like Holy Priest with Flash Concentration Legendary, you still will have a lot of mana issues. So Mistweaver is not alone in this situation. I guess Holy Paladins watching this video are probably laughing in the corner. But guys, Verify now costs 3.8 instead of 4.1. And Renewing Mist now costs 1.8 instead of 2.2. So these changes are actually... I think they're going to be more significant than people assume. I think this is definitely what everyone wanted. But for me, if Mistweavers were to climb and be better, they need to start or in some way be comparable to Holy Paladins. Their damage is way lower. Their healing output is somewhat similar. Mistweaver healing output is really, really strong in my opinion. But their mana consumptions are a problem and Holy Paladin has no mana issues right now. So, generally speaking, I do think the Mistweaver is undervalued. And in my KSM video in the next week or so, you'll see the spot that I'm going to place Mistweaver. So, don't get too discouraged if you're playing Mistweaver. And Holy Priest being in the B tier. Now, Holy Priest was probably around D tier with Mistweaver for a really long time. Until Flash Concentration, <laughs> everyone started running Flash Concentration. I know this is not news. I know Flash Concentration was there for a long time. But all of a sudden, people don't... Or I like to think that people don't see Holy Priest as like the black sheep type of deal when compared to Discipline. I actually think Holy Priest with Flash Concentration is extremely viable and actually really, really secretly strong. They still have the Priest... Utility of giving PIs or power infusions to your mage so they can get more combustions. So there is a lot of the utility the priests still have as a holy. On top of the fact that they have one of the best single target or splash cleave healing abilities through flash concentration and things like, you know, with the talent builds. So all of a sudden, they are getting both. So if you look at the changes to 9.05, you can see that holies, first of all, divine hymn is going to be both. And this is going to be more in raids than mythic plus. Uh, Divine Hymn is going to give you now a stack up to 5 times. It's basically going to give you like a 20% healing increase for like 15 seconds at the end of Divine Hymn. So you kind of want to cast it full. But this is more for raids. And then when you go down to the legendary section for Priest, you'll start to notice that Flash Concentration Buff Duration is increased to 20 seconds instead of 15. And this is, again, 
really really nice because flash concentration is the meta for holy both in raids and mythic plus maybe in raids there's still a lot of people who would go to uh, harmonious apparatus so there is a bit more balance there but in mythic plus especially flash concentration is the king and the main name of the game for holy priest right now is keeping this buff up it's 15 seconds and between those 15 seconds, you weave in a lot of different spells. A lot of the times it's going to be heal. So the 15 second duration is going to be moved to 20 seconds. I kind of wish it was longer. And I think they're actually going to climb and climb and climb. And people are going to realize that Holy Priest is actually doing pretty well in Mythicalus. Especially because PI is so strong right now in this current meta. So now let's go back to the tier list and see where we're going to be placing. I'm going to be placing my Holy Priest here in B section. And I actually completely agree with the viewer perception here i think it will climb into a tier or possibly could do that in the future but let's go b so now we're gonna move on to the restoration druid and how have the mighty fallen for being one of the best healers in bfa they've kind of fallen quite a bit into the b tier you probably have seen a lot of people not picking resto druids for really high mythic close and maybe some of your favorite streamers even swapping from resto druid to balance druid because balance is one of the top dps right now so all of a sudden, why are Druids have fallen? It's kind of hard to say. Honestly, Resto Druid healing output is pretty comparable. You can look at the DPS output, especially with Heart of the Wild, with Balance Affinity, by using your Convoke. You can output pretty big DPS. You're not going to really battle with the Holy Paladin in this department, but you're not that bad. You're pretty good. Arguably, you could say that if you use all of your Convokes offensively, you could be regarded as one of the, maybe the second best DPS or something along those lines. So what's happening? In terms of their most popular legend is for us to draw Circle Life of Death allows you to give a more upfront impact towards your healing and DPS. So maybe that is one of the issues in terms of dealing with burst healing that is required. Although all of a sudden you will notice that a lot of Resto Druids are going to go for the infusion, which is your kind of single target legendary in order to deal with the tank damage. You also have to say that because Resto Druids, and this is the Covenant system at its best, they're all going Night Fae. And because the meta right now for majority of your DPS classes that are in meta, like Balanced Druids, Night Fae, like Fire Mages, Night Fae, like Maximus Ship Hunters, Night Fae, you will notice that picking a Resto Druid for dungeons like Halls of Atonements or SD, Sanguine Deaths, is almost impossible because you need to have a Venter. And the Venter is going to be gotten by having a healer that's going to go Venter, either Something like a Vente Resto Shaman, Vente Paladin, or Vente Discipline Priest. So you could almost partially blame the Covenant system, but you also have to see that the meta talent system has changed for us. So Joe's all of a sudden Flourish is the go-to because you want to use Flourish to deal with that prideful healing, so you can use Convoke the Spirits to DPS. In my personal opinion, Resto Druid is one of the easiest healers to deal with prideful because of how their hots work, tranquility, flourish, convoke, in case it all goes downhill. So I do think that Resto Druids are gonna climb. A little bit or quite a bit because they're getting both. They're getting a lot of changes. Honestly, this is going to be so much substantial. Resto Druid, Rejuvenation has been increased, Wild Growth has been increased. There is a conduit for Wild Growth that's only gonna climb and climb and climb. So you need to make sure to get that conduit for Wild Growth. This is going to be around four, five, six percent healing increase, which is again secretly I'm really excited about this. And I think Resto Druids are going to climb both in raids and mythic and I think there's going to be more of them, but like I mentioned. Covenant system is gonna bite them when you wanna do Holes of Atonement or SD. I also have to mention if you're Resto Druid, I'm kinda excited for Resto Druid buffs and things like that. And honestly, the legendaries you're going to be picking is probably going to change in some way. So, first of all, there is going to be legendary buffs for Verdant Infusion, extends duration of your heal overtime effects on the Swiftman target by 10 seconds instead of 8 seconds. If you now go to the legendary choices for Resto Druid, you'll notice that, is that Circle Life of Death, like I mentioned before, is really, really popular with around 37% usage. You'll also see that Verdant Infusion, and this is before the buff, is really climbing in popularity for these hierarchies in terms of dealing with that single target healing, especially extending that scenario world. So, Verdant Infusion is getting buffed, and all of a sudden it's probably going to be something that you should get if you're looking to do some high-end mythic plus skis or pvp or possibly even certain raid situations where there's going to be a person that's gonna take in substantial single target damage i do have to mention that in raids a lot of people will go with vision of an ending growth because it's gonna give you a chance of getting rejuvenation and rejuvenation is getting buffed so there's going to be a sort of shift in legendary so guys if you're a resto druid i would definitely recommend crafting word infusion if you're looking to do that kind of content so I'm still going to place Resto Juice in this position, better than Holy Breeze, possibly going into 8 here later on. 
Uh, at the end of the day, I still feel Resto Druid has a really nice toolkit. My personal opinion, I wish Feral Affinity would be back because I just preferred being in kitty form, applying bleeds and things like that. But that's just my personal opinion. So let's go back to the rest of the healers in terms of Mythic Plus. And we're going to go to this Moon Priest. This Moon Priest is placed in A tier based on community perception, based on the Keystone. Do I think it's A tier? I think this Moon Priest is going to be easily an A tier healer at this given point. I think this Moon Priest, uh, the... Again, the utility they provide is comparable to Holy Priest. You have your PIs and things like that. You have a Master Spells. You have your Mind Suits that are very, very strong on certain keys. Bursting Weeks. Things like Master Spell are going to be really, 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 really strong. So this Mean Priest, what it provides over a Holy Priest is the damage. The damage of this Mean Priest is going, to be, it's going to be better than Holy Priest. But again, I have to say, I, I really believe that Holy Priest is going to climb a bit. But... So far, this Wind Priest, I still think it's extremely in a, in a good position here. In A tier, the damage, the utility and everything, I think it's worthy its place. And in Raids, we'll talk about Spiritual very, very soon. I do have to talk about the changes that are happening. Again, this is not really that relevant for um, Priests in Mythic Plus because Spiritual is getting nerfed. So all the sudden, it now absorbs 80% of healing done, was 100%. This is not going to be big enough to change this Wind Priest's Spiritual usage in Raids. It's still going to be the go-to in 9.05, so don't get too scared. But because this is Mythic Plus, we're just not going to cover too much into it. Again, I've talked about Holy Priest, Divine Him changes. That's going to get them a bit higher utility in rates. So, this Wind Priest, good position. I think they're going to be a solid Mythic Plus and solid Raid Healer. I do think you need to have an organized group for you to succeed as Discipline Priest. I don't think it's the best healer when trying to get KSM or getting pogs or unorganized groups and people taking unnecessary damage or unexpected damage. I think this Spirit Priest falls. So now the last two healers and you can see what's sub-creation again. This is not my tier list. This is auto-generated by the actual success rate of dungeons. You can see that they put Holy Paladin and Resto Shaman. Now, I've been doing a lot of pogs, 20 plus and things like that, and I've seen a big shift into this. I'm going to go with my, my good opinion right now, what's going to be the best healer. And in my honest opinion, it's going to be something like this. I think Holy Paladin has become, or is on the way to becoming, the best healer in World of Warcraft, both in this patch and 9.05. I think Holy Paladin is just hitting all the boxes. It only took one tier, less than one tier, for Holy to become the king of kings in terms of healing, both in Raid and Mythiclus, in my honest opinion. Why is Holy Paladin so, so strong? Now, first of all, Holy Paladin can provide the best passive dps they can provide damage reduction cooldowns they have a lot of utility bobs bubble and things like that and they have very good healing this triple threat of utility dps and healing has come has made them on top of the fact that they had no mana issues whatsoever they are just so so strong right now are they good for things like pogs not organized groups where they go too much into bursting and things like that no i actually don't think holy pal i think holy paladin suffer from being into these pug groups but when you have holy paladin especially something like again we have to go into it so if you go into holy paladin you can see some of the talent builds that are emerging really strongly you can see the legendaries now shock barrier is the number one go-to legendary for holy paladin you'll notice that the math paragon is also something that's kind of climbing especially for holy paladins that are vent here so this is going to provide additional damage now all of a sudden you will notice that majority of holy paladins are going to be kyrian but there's also vent here counterparts vent here is very popular for holy paladins because like i mentioned because of the dps composition meta right now and majority of them are night fair you need to have a vent here and vent here is coming from a healer holy paladin vent here is gonna have ashen hollow on a four minute cooldown that ashen hollow is gonna provide a huge dps burst where you can eradicate your pride force or er eradicate bosses so if you have a group that can be like hey you have a four minute ash and hollow you can use ash and hollow at this boss you can use ash and hollow at this boss i'm gonna use as a fire mage i'm gonna use my combust or actually i'm not gonna use my combustion i'm gonna hold it because your ash and hollow is gonna kill the pride so i can use my combustion later on because generally speaking in high keys you have to decide between a fire mage combustion or something like a balanced druid convo so a lot of the times, maybe you can even avoid that because your Holy Paladin with Ashen Hollow is going to completely destroy the Pride. So all of a sudden, this micromanagement, and if you are able to do this micromanagement, Holy Paladin is going to be the king. All of a sudden, in these poke keys, 
A lot of people are just looking for Holy Paladin. They specifically say, hey, we need a Holy Paladin. Do you need to play Ventir? Absolutely not. The majority of Holy Paladins are actually playing Kirin. Divine Toll is extremely good because it's one minute. It gives you this AoE healing. It gives you glimmers and things like that. A lot of the high keys have been done both with Kirin and Ventir. So you can pick your poison in terms of can I micromanage Ashen Hollow or do I need additional AoE healing or, you know, oh crap button with Divine Toll. Pick what you need. But Generally speaking, Holy Paladins have become one of the strongest and what's happening with 9.05 for Paladin, you can see the Paladins are getting nerfed. Now this nerf is going to make Holy Shock now cost an additional mana, 16% instead of 14. So this is probably going to be felt by Holy Paladins because Holy Shock is just your bread and butter. You might actually have to use a mana potion. I know it's crazy and things like that. I deeply believe that in 9.1, if there's not going to be too many changes, I think Holy Paladin or the gap between Holy Paladin and the rest of the healers is going to widen even more. I think Holy Paladin right now is exerting its dominance over other healers in an organized group environment, and I think they're just going to get better and better and better. This mana nerf was extremely needed, so now mana might be more of a concern, but you, on top of that, you still have your damage reductions, you still have your passive damage, you still have good healing, so... Nothing's really going to change. Holy Paladin is still going to climb and climb, especially with Season 2 Affix. We'll have to see what Season 2 is going to be. You have to remember, Prideful is giving you this mana back. We have to see if the Season 2 one is going to accommodate for the mana resource loss. And that's something that's going to be very, very interesting when Season 2 Affix is going to be announced. But Paladin is just going to climb and climb, in my honest opinion. There is a chance of a new build emerging because Covenant's like... But again, Necrolord Vanquisher's Hammer has been buffed. There's been certain legendaries that have been buffed. There is a possibility of a completely new build emerging. I don't think it's going to happen because a lot of the people or paladins or healers in general still want to be bent here for those SD and Halls of Atonement buffs. But we have to see. It's very, very exciting to be Holy Paladin. Now, I kind of skimmed over the rest of Shaman and why did I not put them on S tier? Because I do feel that rest of Shamans have fallen since the very start. At the very start, Resto Shamans were the absolute meta, and everyone would be like, Resto Shamans are the best. And I'm sure there's going to be comments in the video saying, Resto Shamans are way better, they're the best. You will notice that Resto Shamans are good in all content, but they're not the best in every content. So keep that in mind. They are in the meta, but they're not like overwhelmingly top, both in raids and meta close. I would, in my personal opinion, place Holy Paladin better than Resto Shaman in every content right now. If you're a Mistweaver, of course you're going to be salty because the meta right now is probably these three healers. So there is a lot of issues here with balancing and healer balancing and hopefully that's going to change in 9.1. So why did I put Resto Shaman here? I think Resto Shaman, if you want to get your KSM and things like that, is extremely good. Having Interrupt as Resto Shaman is really, really strong. And honestly, Interrupt is probably the biggest thing that separates Resto Shaman from every single other healer. Resto Shaman DPS output is okay. Resto Shaman healing is pretty good and simple to optimize. But outside of that, Resto Shaman's big thing is utility. Things like your AoE Stone Totem, things like Interrupt. And Interrupts are really, really big in high key. So I feel this is where Shaman is shining. So let's go to Resto Shaman changes for 9.05. And there's quite a few of them. And I have to mention I've tested them on TTR. So generally speaking, Chain Lightning damage is going to be increased by 35%. Great. Resto Shamans are dealing more damage now or AoE damage. But... You'll notice that Restoration Shaman Lava Burst damage has been reduced by 10%. And this is probably mainly because Blizzard was doing a whole lot of changes for Elemental. And the way that the auras, modifiers, and things work, they were probably too lazy to change this. So all the sudden Resto Shaman single target damage is going to be lower because of this change. Which again, Resto Shamans were not the best healer DPS class in there. So this is kind of going to hurt. But I'm happy that Chain Lightning is going to be better. In terms of Covenants, honestly, every single Covenant but Necrolord was buffed. If you don't include Fleshcraft in terms of re damage reduction when you cast it and the a casting speed. So generally speaking, a lot of the Covenants are going to be pretty close for Resto Shamans, which is great. You can pick any Covenant and don't feel too bad about it. At the end of the day, if you're doing really high-end Mythic Plus Dungeons, you're probably going to go Vent here because Vent here is going to give you a significant buff for Dungeons like Sanguine Deaths. You have to keep in mind that whole sort of Atonement Vent here kind of benefit has been reduced but still you're probably going to be pigeonholed into being a ventier resto shaman if you're doing mythic plus dungeons it's also going to be very very solid in raids because you can see the chain harvest has been bought by 15 percent so all of a sudden i think there's going to be a lot of resto shamans going towards ventier and i have to mention that there's probably going to be certain shaking up in terms of legendaries that i talked about before 
you have to notice here, and this is very important. Elemental are getting Earthquake buff. A huge Earthquake buff. And I was thinking about this, and people told me about this, and I was like, how did I miss this? Like I mentioned, there is a legendary for Resto Shamans where Earth Elemental has a permanent Earthquake attached to it. And I was wondering if that Earthquake is going to be impacted by Elemental Shaman Earthquake buffs, and it seems to be. So all of a sudden, this is the live testing. I have this legendary crafted, I have this equipped, and I'm basically using it on single target. And you can see the damage here. You can see it doing decent amount of damage. All of a sudden, this legendary, even in live state right now, even without the buff, is still very usable on dungeons where you don't require a lot of healing, where you feel like you don't need that Riptide healing, where you feel like you could use that 5-minute cooldown a lot more. And now this is testing from the PTR server. And you can see the damage is significantly bigger. All of a sudden, this legendary's overall DPS is going to be huge. So I feel that a lot of Resto Shamans, at least this is my prediction right now, are probably going to go vent here because of, again, if you're doing high-end mythic dungeons, you're probably going to be pigeonholed into going vent here. Vent here is also going to be solid in raids. And you're probably going to have at least this legendary as a backup for dungeons where you feel you need to do more damage. Keep in mind that using Earth Elemental, you're probably going to be using it for bosses or things like Prideful because if you use it, or the way that it works in Mythic Plus in terms of taunting, if you use it on trash pack, there's a high chance that it's going to die instantly in really high key. So this is going to be used for, let's say, similar fashion to Ashen Hollow, in order to kill your Pridefuls, in order to kill your raid bosses to provide additional damage. It's not going to heal people like Ashen Hollow, but it's probably going to bring Resto Shamans closer to the overall damage potential. So I do feel that Resto Shamans are going to climb and they're gonna get better in 9.05. Do I think they're going possibly S tier? I think they're going to be more preferable than Discipline Priest in high-end poke scenarios. But I don't think they're gonna get close to what Holy Paladin provides. But I still think being a Resto Shaman in 9.05, if this change is going to be intended, I think it's still very, very desirable. Honestly, to kind of summarize the ranking, or at least my ranking... Uh, I do feel that Holy Paladin is gonna be, like I mentioned, the king. I think Resto Shaman, with again, if certain changes to Legendaries are going to persist, I think it's going to be interesting. It's probably going to be below, or at least I would put it below Holy Paladin. I think Discipline Priest is going to be next in terms of here. Again, Resto Druid, Holy Priest, I probably should put Miss Weaver here, and honestly, I will. I think Miss Weaver is really not that far away from everyone else. I think. They are kind of devalued because there's so little monks or mystery or monks in the game right now. And generally speaking, their representation means that they're, again, there's going to be less players pushing high keys. Community perception driving them down. I generally feel that Mistweaver is really comparable to a lot of other healers. In perfect world, you could actually put them all like this. <laughs> to some extent. But right now, I'm just going to place it like this. And I feel this is going to be a somewhat adequate representation of my perception or healer perception coming into 9.05 after the buffs have been applied so this is the raid healing section of the video and this is going to be talking about 9.05 again 9.05 is not bringing anything new in terms of content so you're still going to be progressing castle natria is the healer meta for raids going to change in terms of hey is this one priest is wrestle shaman or holy paladin are they still going to be the kings of raid healing again this is hps numbers and a lot of people don't actually understand that hps is not the defining factor for healers. For example, Mistweaver is doing quite well, but if you look at the top end guilds or bosses, let's say for example, if you go to Sire the Naturals and we look at the logs, the amount of healers that were brought, you'll see that there were 21. So there is a lot of different ways of interpreting this data and don't look at just pure HPS numbers. Overall, the meta for Castle Natria, and this is not a surprise to anyone, is this thing priest with Spatial. Spatial is getting nerfed. It's still going to be the go-to for this main priest because at the end of the day having this absorption every one minute is insanely strong you're almost like a fire mage but you know a healing fire mage or fire mage for healers it's just really 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 strong with the damage output of castle natria if castle natria didn't have damage bursts every one minute or so spiritual would probably not be as good so this is something to consider with the next raid here coming in what are the damage patterns historically speaking Blizzard has always kind of stuck to this like one minute or something big burst AoE healing needed phases. So I would not be too sure about them changing that kind of scenarios in the future. Holy Paladin, again, 
one of the best DPS healers in the game. Super strong passive damage, really, especially with Ash and Hollow. Like I mentioned, for majority of people, I don't actually recommend going Ash and Hollow unless you know why you're going Ash and Hollow. So Holy Paladin, super strong passive damage, super strong healing. You have to remember, all of these parasols for Holy Paladins, a lot of these parasols for Holy Paladins are going to be using Devo Aura with Aura Mastery, which is going to give you 15% damage reduction like in like 40 yard range, which does not show up in healing meters. So Holy Paladin HPS is actually even better than this. Like, again, for this win priest, you also have to take into effect that Barrier is not showing up on meters. So generally speaking, Holy Paladin, HPS, DPS, Utility makes them really, really, really strong. Honestly, one of the strongest healers in my opinion, and they're only going to get better in the future. Resto Shaman, again, the Utility King, good HPS, good Utility. You have your Windrush Totem, you have your Spirit Link, one of the things that really, really, really makes Resto Shaman strong. We'll have to see how it's going to happen in 9.1 when a new raid comes out. Is there going to be a lot of stacking? That's also something that defines if Resto Shaman is going to be a good healer. Like, if I were to say, in terms of safe bets, I would say Holy Paladin is a safe bet. Probably this Priest Resto Shaman, I think, is still going to be there. But honestly, it also depends on boss fights. What's happening to Mystery? What's happening to Resto Druid? What's happening to Holy Priest? I think Holy Priest is going to climb with the Divine Hymn change. I think it's going to give them additional utility. It's not going to be groundbreaking. You're kind of like buffing everyone else. I still think this Wind Priest Spiritual is going to be the king. So Holy Priest is going to, you know, as a Holy Priest, you have a choice. You can go and spec Disc. Resto Druid, I think, is going to climb quite a bit. They're getting like a 5-6% HPS increase. So all of a sudden, they're going to be really big in HPS. So maybe some of the guilds will be like, hey, we don't need that passive damage or we don't need those dior cooldowns let's bring a resto jew to just like brute force the healing and i think that could actually happen i think resto jew might become the dark horse of the healers right now and i think they could climb and i'm actually very optimistic about resto jude's climbing in raid situations i don't think they're going to be brought into world first straight away and things like that 9.1 will tell that but i think resto jew is going to be the dark horse in this Kind of healing composition i think misweavers are going to stay where they kind of are the mana reduction is nice but in order to bring them to raid first kind of content they need a new spell a new talent damage reduction more damage in my honest opinion they can't compete with holy paladins is that going to come in 9.05 no that's going to come or possibly could come in 9.1 let's cross our fingers in terms of changes to misweaver monk so i don't think the meta is going to change i think Resto Jude is going to climb a bit. I think Discipline Priest is still going to be extremely strong. I still think the triple threat of your Discipline Priest, Holy Paladin and Resto Shaman, is going to reign over in 9.05, with possibly Resto Jude coming in somewhere in there. Only 9.1 can actually shift this. Let's hope it will change. Guys, let me know how you feel about this video. Let me I know it is extremely long. Let me know if you want to see that KSM video, where I talk about healer that is going to provide you with the easiest way to get all dungeons plus 15s. Believe me, the ranking for that is very, very different. Guys, thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.